everyone, my name is Rob Karlmark and I'm a meteorologist, a weather guy here at ABC 10. But you know, when I go home, I'm just like you and my daily life consists of just chores, hanging out with the kids, trying to live my life and one of the things that is my job is taking out the trash. You know, over time, I've been trying to do the right thing just like you and it's becoming more and more difficult, especially when it comes to recycling. And I learned this firsthand by my little experiment, totally unrelated to recycling, just an exercise for my mind. I forget things all the time. I've got three kids. It's easy to do, trust me, when you're tired. So I came up with something years ago to try and use 50 or less single-use plastic bags. I used to see them all the time. Then the next year, I tried to use 25 or less. This was really, really difficult because look, we forget things all the time. But as I started to sort of revolve around this experiment and this challenge, I became more interested in the bags themselves. What are they used for? What is this whole thing? Why are some cities and some obscure places trying to ban these bags? What's the deal with this? What I discovered is what we all kind of know now. These bags in particular and other single-use things like water bottles or Ziploc bags, not to pick on a brand, but single-use plastic bags, you get the idea. Uh, you use it once, but it lasts forever. And we are running into a major problem with this kind of plastic and this kind of use. Plastic in and of itself is not a bad thing. It's cheap, it's really useful. It's gonna be here for a while. But what about these certain things that are, are, are not very helpful for everybody? Because there is a major problem in the pipeline in how this all works. What we think of as recyclable, glass, metal, uh, some other kinds of plastic, you know, your detergent containers, milk, cartons, things like that. We put it in the bin and we pretty much know what's gonna happen. But these lower quality, lighter plastics are really difficult to recycle. And recently, China said, we're not gonna recycle it at all. Did you know that almost all of those were being shipped off to other countries? China said no. So then they were being sent to Malaysia, Thailand, uh, and other countries. And finally, they are saying no as well. And so now we have a major problem because this kind of plastic, which is usually used in food packaging, becomes contaminated. Let's face it, do you really wash out your hummus Tupperware or your hummus plastic bin? I know you don't, I don't. And do you really wash out that milk container? No, and nobody else does either. So that's the problem is that when it's contaminated with all of our good intentions, plastic becomes trash. So you know what's happening to this trash now? It is not being recycled. It's not going to Asia. It is being collected in the bins, but it's most likely going to the landfill. Your blue bin, your recyclables, with good intentions as it started out, is now basically just trash. It actually was a source of money not too long ago. Now it's a cost to cities and businesses all over trying to get rid of this stuff because nobody will take it. There is some good faith efforts to try and uh, educate people about contamination, sort out the higher, higher quality plastics, but overall uh, the, the changes that you're going to see with plastic is more out of necessity rather than a deep desire from everyone to try and save the world. We have to do this and we have to do this together. One of the things that happened recently is that the city of San Francisco banned single-use plastics. First it was straws, huge national debate. You get paper straws at McDonald's now. It's just a thing. It's happening. Not everyone likes it, but, but that's what you're going to get. It's now extended to plastic water bottles at the airport. Guess what? You can still get water out of the drinking fountain. You can still get water in soon to be everywhere metal containers. Easy to recycle. Uh, it's a one-to-one. -one. Uh, recycled aluminum becomes recycled aluminum. Recycled plastic is usually downcycled. It's still plastic, but in a much lower grade form, and it doesn't go away forever. That's the problem with plastic. None of it is ever compostable. And one of the other things that I think a lot of people are starting to learn is there's another category of plastic and how it is reused. It's combustion with energy recovery. That is a fancy word for burning it. We burn plastic. We burn plastic because there's nowhere for it to go. It costs money for it to go in the landfill and there are new businesses popping up saying, hey, it has petroleum, it is flammable. If we burn it, that creates heat. Heat is energy and we can use that for something. You know what? Perhaps that is one way of dealing with it, but it's not what you envision 
when you put your plastic water bottle in the recycling bin. This is obviously a subject that is growing in interest. It is growing in, pro it is growing as being a problem and it is growing as a source of people coming up with solutions. We're right in the beginning of this and I hope you follow along with me and this story because it's really important to everybody. If this interests you, we're gonna have a few more videos on this. What is the current state of recycling right now? I'll have a video about that a little bit later on. And what is the future of recycling? We can all see the writing on the wall, which is a bunch of different ideas all being wiped out. What's next? Maybe we have to start all over and reimagine the whole idea of recycling and plastics in particular.